Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Derek and it's been quite a while since I've done one of these wire feed welding basics videos. The reason why is because I've been moving and so I'm finally in the new shop. It's a 20 foot Connex or a 20 foot shipping container. And so it's a temporary shop while I finish up my last little bit of school. So anyway, I'm finally getting to one of these videos and I wanted to just do a quick one on pretty much everything you're gonna need to start MIG welding, at least in terms of everything you're gonna need to actually have a proper MIG weld when you go ahead and strike an arc and lay down the bead. So this is not going to necessarily be a list of safety equipment, so I'll probably do that video later on. So first thing, let's just talk about the gas bottle real quick, right? So if you're gonna start doing some gas shielded welding, you're gonna need a gas bottle. So for MIG welding, because this is wire feed welding basics, and it's the process that I know the most about, although I'll let you know right now I am not a certified or professional welder of any kind I've just been doing this for a little bit and I've learned a little bit here and there and I'm just know some of the basics and so I share those basically you need a 75 25 gas mix so that's going to be 75 percent argon 25 percent carbon dioxide that's going to be the best thing for you to run when just welding mild steel so anyway the best place to buy them is probably going to be from your local industrial gas supplier you can also get them from your farm and ranch stores that's probably a far more expensive way to do it. Or pick them up from a mom and pop local welding supplier store. A number of different places you can get them and a number of different sizes. So this is a decent sized one for a homeowner bottle and I can't remember the size off the top of my head. But it costs me about 60 bucks to fill up every time and to buy brand new as an owner bottle from my local Praxair, it seems like I was quoted somewhere around the $150 mark plus a $60 fill up or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Exactly what it was but they can be kind of pricey so keep that in mind if you're wanting to get into MIG welding. Second let's talk about the regulator. So there's a couple of different styles of regulators that I know of. There's the two dial ones and then there's also like a, a flow meter style that I have never messed with but basically this is the one I went with and it's worked since I picked it up, so I'm not worried about picking up anything else. This is an Olsen from Harbor Freight. You probably could get away with purchasing some from Amazon, uh, and maybe you want to, for something like this, go with a high quality brand or a high quality regulator so that you know you're getting something good, because these can actually be pretty expensive too. They run about, I think this one was about 60 to $80, somewhere in that range, and it's probably more expensive now than when I bought it, but you can probably pick them up anywhere from between like that $60 range. Well, I don't I don't really know the height because I don't look for the super expensive ones, but I'd have to imagine 160 bucks would buy you a good quality one. Meh, somewhere right in the middle you might get a good one. I don't have a whole lot of recommendations because this is the only one I've ever had and it has worked fine for me. It's just a really important component that might be easy to look past and get something super cheap, which some people would probably say I did. I think I did spend a little bit more on this one. And some of the stuff Harbor Freight's putting out these days is pretty good. Just be mindful of what you're purchasing when you're picking one of these up. So coming here out of the regulator, we now get to the hose. I don't have a whole lot to add about this one. I picked up this one cheap off of Amazon for around like the $16 mark and it's held up for a couple of years. There's no cracks, breaks or anything like that. I'll put a link for it in the description if you'd like to pick up your own off of Amazon. If you use that link, they'll kick back, I don't know it. The price they paid for it, probably 50 cents at the absolute most, but every little bit helps the channel out. Go ahead and pick up a decent hose, find something with some good brass fittings that you think would work well. As long as it's well constructed and has decent reviews, you probably can't go wrong with a good little gas hose. So before we get to the welder, let's talk about something that probably could be pretty easily forgotten, and that's just a good welding cart. So you could either build your own. Some people say it's kind of a rite of passage thing. That's fine. I've never built one. Actually, I sort of made one. Some of my long-term subscribers will remember it. That's a different story for another time. But anyway, a good little welding cart will do you well. You don't have to have a welding cart. You also don't have to buy one. You're just going to need somewhere to run that gas bottle along with your MIG welder and why not? Have an actual welding cart that you can run both of those on. So that's definitely something that isn't 100% necessary, but I wouldn't wanna try and do MIG welding or gas welding in general without a cart to caddy around the gas bottle with the welding machine. So here's another example of a welding cart you could pick up that you can keep a gas bottle on. Those chains are to keep the gas bottle secured to the cart, but basically it's just like a cheap $40 one. I picked this up from Harbor Freight. I've seen like the exact same thing sold on Eastwood. So you're probably gonna find these from different brands. You could probably even pick something up off of Amazon that's built exactly the same way. 
They're pretty cheap, good little carts to help get you started. So lastly, and probably the most obvious, but I think it is worth discussing a little bit, an actual MIG welder. So a lot of machines out there are gonna be advertised as MIG welders. You're gonna find them on Amazon, and they're gonna say MIG welder. Really, all they are is just a flux core welder. The only kind of wire that you can run through them is a self-shielded wire. You cannot run gas through the machine. So just be mindful if you are really brand new to this stuff and don't know that there are cheap machines out there that claim to be MIG welders, they are not always going to be equipped to run gas shielded welding processes. This one is, many of them are going to be, but some of them definitely are not. So just be careful of what you're picking up and purchasing. And I suppose the very last thing you're gonna need in order to get going in MIG welding or gas shielded wire feed welding is some good solid core welding wire. Gasless flux core and the solid core, usually your gasless flux core wire is going to be just a good uh, shiny steel looking welding wire where your solid core wire is going to have a little bit of a copper coating on it. And lastly is a proper MIG torch. So basically this is your electrode here. The wire comes out the end. When it makes contact with a piece of material connected to the ground, you light up an arc and you start welding. So in this is also a gas nozzle. This is the gas nozzle itself, but the gas runs through this whole hose set up on into the lead here and it comes out these holes. So you need to make sure that your MIG torch is actually equipped to run gas through it. On a couple of the flux core welders I've had, the torch will appear to have the ability to run gas through it, but there's no actual hose within this assembly to actually run gas through it. And there's nowhere at the end of the machine to hook up that gas to. So just be mindful of that as well. Hopefully you found some good information in this video. If nothing else, hopefully it was maybe at least slightly entertaining. I really like to just try to get a little bit of information out there to new welders, uh, especially from like a new welders kind of point of view. I've not been welding for a super long time. I only started welding about three years, four years ago now at this point, somewhere around in there. And I've never gone to welding school or anything like that. So it is kind of nice to just get some really dumbed down basic information, I think. And that's kind of what I'm trying to create here. There's probably people out there better than me at presenting this information that know more and everything like that. But sometimes they talk in terms that are a little hard to understand and where I'm still pretty much in the beginning of my welding career, even though it's not a career, I don't do it for money or anything like that. It's mostly just for fun to fix my own things, build things that I need and just kind of take care of myself, be a little more self-reliant, save a little cash and have a little fun. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you found some good information in it, I hope you'll give me a big thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already, the biggest thing you can do to help me out is go click that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell. I'd really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.